Good day viewers. This is your instructor Sayyid Zaki Ahmed for this lecture. This lecture will include the cost of the valuation of stock, the VAC in detail. So please see this lecture till the last so that you can understand the coming lectures in future based on these lectures. Please subscribe my channel for getting any advanced lectures. My channel is given below logo Mind Benders 172. Our current lecture is FM07, that is a continuation of the previous lecture. I have today lecture on weighted average cost of capital, valuation of common stock, capital asset pricing model. We will discuss these in detail. The further valuations will be discussed in the next lectures. We know the capital structure of a company normally comprises of three categories normally the common stock, the preferred stocks and the bonds or any other long term debt. So weighted average cost of capital is basically a weighted proportionally, proportionately weighted capital cost of each of these categories now let's discuss this for a minute through formula now VAC is equal to the market value of equity divided by the total value of financing multiplied by the cost of equity plus market value of the debt divided by the total value of financing multiplied by cost of debt multiplied by 1 minus tax rate. This is formulatically shown here. These formula symbols are here. RE equals to total cost of equity. RD equals to total cost of debt. E is market value of the total equity. And D is market value of total debt. The value is now total market value of company combined debt and equity or E plus T. E by V is equal to equity portion of the total financing. D by V is that portion of total financing. TC is income tax rate. Now this company wants to raise capital to buy a new machinery. It needs about a million dollars to do the same. So the firm can raise capital through two sources, equity and debt. Either it issues 50,000 shares of 10 each and raises $500,000 through equity. Or it can raise money from issue of bonds. That is $500,000. Firm issues 5,000 bonds at 100 each. And the bondholders expect dollar six percent return similarly the shareholders expect a return of seven percent so seven percent is the cost of equity now we solve this problem the cost of equity is five hundred thousand the cost of debt is five hundred thousand so total the market value of the investment becomes one million cost of equity is seven percent Cost of debt is 0.06 percent. 
six percent dollar so the tax rate is also given so the VAT formula becomes here and it's solved it comes to 5.45 percent VAC so this is the way we solve VAC problems before we go into valuation of stocks and other things there are a few concepts I would like to make clear for the students for the students of accounting this is nothing a new topic we make the cash flow statements and accounts but for the students of other categories who do not have the base of accounting they must understand what are free cash flows now free cash flows are obtained necessarily for valuation of stocks and other bonds and other things so free cash flows are obtained by two methods first method is net income method from here we go for free cash flows from net income let me get my pointer out because all my students are having have difficulty in understanding the whole thing so I have my pointer out so we have free cash flows from net income we add non cash charges minus your working capital cash flow needs plus interest adjusted for tax minus any cash flows for expenditures this is the way we take out the free cash flows from net income now non cash charges explained here are depreciation amortization which are not actually expense they are an adjustment basically done so these are adjusted again here added in the cash because we do not spend money on these these are already taken place in the previous years so losses and expenses are added while gains and subtracted gains are subtracted right so you understand the point now let's go to the next slide now the positive changes in the net working capital is subtracted and the negative change in, in the net working capital is added so capital expenditures are equal to closing net fixed assets plus depreciation of the expense depreciation expense minus the opening fixed assets this is the way we get the free cash flows from net income now if we start cash flows free cash flows from operating activities it's very simple we get the free cash flows that are equal to cash flows from operating activities plus interest adjusted for tax minus cash flows from expenditures now let's see a worked example on cash flows free cash flows this is an example on of a company now you can see it's worked out here all together I don't need to discuss this in detail you can go through it and you can see how the free cash flows are obtained why do we need to value our stocks this is because to get our actual intrinsic value or the theoretical value of a stock because the price in the stock market is not current price is not a good indicator of the indicator intrinsic value so when the investor knows the intrinsic value he will know whether to invest or buy the stock at the current price or not the types of valuation normally involve stock valuation involved are two types absolute and relative which are shown in the next slide
now we discuss the stock valuation the absolute stock valuation involves the fundamental information obtained from the financial statements of the company and they involve internal all the internal reports and everything to give you a company's primary valuation through cash flows dividends and growth rates the absolute stock valuation also is of two types the dividend discount model and the discount cash flow model which is also called the free cash flow model discounted now the relative one the relative stock valuation generally involves the information from different other companies competing type key companies which have the similar pe ratios on all the ratios which are similar and to compare their prices and then we involve and then we value our price we derive our price from those information generally involve the valuation of comparative comparable company analysis <clears throat> all the different companies of the same type and similar strengths normally their value their information their operating expenses all these are studied and then and relative information has taken out to value our stock now we discuss the popular absolute stock valuation methods the number one is dividend discount model now in this we normally assume that the company's dividend represents the cash flows which the company pays its shareholders at end of every year so the cash flow is this dividend so essentially the model states that the intrinsic value of the company's stock price equals the present value of the company's future dividends in this way normally we assume the valuation of the stock and one thing to make sure that the dividend discount model is applicable only if a company distributes dividend regularly and the distribution is stable now we have the discounted cash flow model in this discounted cash flow model generally we have in this we assume that the under the discounted cash flow approach the intrinsic value of the stock is calculated by discounting the company's free cash flows to its present value the main advantage of this dsdcf model is that it does not require any assumptions regarding the distribution of dividends thus it is suitable for companies with unknown unpredictable dividend distributions however it is a little more sophisticated in form of calculations rather than dividend discount model now the third kind of that is the relative valuation it is normally comparable companies analysis where we compare similar five or six companies together with our company and compare their general prices ratios and assume their theoretical price by watching their multiple price multiples the commonly used multiples include price to earnings price earning ratio price to book ratio enterprise value to ep earning before interest and taxes the com comparable companies analysis method is one of the simplest form of or techniques but however it is a little challenging to getting the similar kind of companies to compare with our company now we discuss the constant growth dividend discount model it is a, the constant growth dividend discount model is also called the gordon growth model for valuation 
it is the stock value under the DDM equals the discounted present value of dividends per share expected to grow at a constant rate. Now the formula is here the stock value is equal to D0 that is the dividend 0 is the current dividend multiplied by 1 plus G. G is the growth rate of the dividend divided by the required rate of return that is also the cost of equity minus the G. G. So the G is the growth rate of the dividends and it is the sustainable growth which is equal to the product of the retention ratio that is 1 minus dividend payout ratio and return on equity is given here. So this is the formula for constant growth dividend discount model. Let's do an example now, the Gordon growth model, that means the stable growth model. Estimate the intrinsic value of a stock which is currently trading at $1.35, that means it's trading at $1.35 in the stock exchange. Based on the following data, required rate of return, cost of equity is 10%, current dividend per share is $2, current dividend growth rate is forever, is 5% so is the good stock good for investment or not now this he wants to know the intrinsic value and it is trading at $35 whether it is beneficial to buy this this is how we estimate this now we have the formula current dividend per share is there 1 plus growth rate that is 2 multiplied by 1 plus 5 percent that is 2.1 dividend per share at the end of year 1 this is year 1 end the, the given here before was year 0 basically intrinsic value becomes now 2.1 divided by 10 minus 5 that is if you remember the rate of minus the dividend growth rate so the answer becomes dollar 42 now intrinsic value has come out to be dollar 42 and it is trading at dollar 35 so it is beneficial for us so and it will have positive returns in future Now students consider a situation where a company launches a new product. The new product is new and there is no competitor. So naturally the research and technology and everything will cost to produce more. Similarly it will be more in demand. So our returns will be higher in for the initial few years and then it comes to the normal growth model. So this is the this is also called the multi-state dividends bond model this is the same where the companies normally initially earn more higher returns in the initial years like let's say three years to five years and then they start earning normally in the normal way where the value is called the terminal value in after the end of the growth period. Now this is calculated by so basically multi-stage dividend discount model in, in two stages where initially high growth period and secondly the normal growth period is added there. So basically these both are added together and discounted at the required rate of return on equity that is the cost of equity to take the value of the stock now here after the initial high growth period normally the normal period starts that is also called 
that is valued as terminal value which is determined by the single stage dividend growth model or using some price multiple such as price earning ratio and the dividends the formula remains the same this vn is the terminal value here where it is calculated by for infinite period the the Gordon Grove discount model single stage that is discounted at the cost of equity to bring the value stock value and let's discuss the discounted cash flow model the free cash flow valuation models can be used basically to assess our uh, valuation model now one thing is here that these cash flows are taken out from operating activities less any expected changes in the working capital less any expected capital expenditures you can see the free cash flow before in my lecture slides so a single stage cash flow model discounts expected free cash flows at the end of year one equals to free cash flows year one divided by VAC minus G now there can be a little change in air also in this single model if we don't have a growth then this free cash flow will remain stable all around the years and divided by VAC weighted average cost of capital will give us the value so it will be taken out as a perpetuity valuation the simple here is shown enterprise value is equal to free cash flow divided by VAC Now there is another kind of valuation of stocks basically which can be called a relative type also. This is called the capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model is mainly used for stocks also and it is the relationship between the systematic risk and the expected return. That means the systematic risk is the risk which can be controlled. It's like a car when you can control an accident by control to the steering and the speed. This is called systematic risk. There is non-systematic risk also. That is where the system is not in your control or the stock price or the value is not under control. Let's ba say bad economic condition or we had this coronavirus which affected all the stock valuation so this is called unsystematic risk so the systematic risk is controllable risk and the expected return so it is a relationship between the systematic risk and the expected return for the asset particularly with stocks it is used widely in finance for pricing risky securities and generating expected returns for assets given the risk and the cost of the capital the formula is given here eri is equal to rf plus beta b multiplied by risk premium market risk premium ERM is market risk minus the risk free return. ERM stands for market return. So, when we have this formula where ERI is expected return of the investment, that is E is equal to the risk free rate plus beta multiplied by your market risk premium so this is the formula for that 
we will be given this risk three things and we have, will have to calculate the fourth variable with this formula so this is not very difficult these are available in the papers also and people who are watching the stocks in the market this is basically a comparison with the stocks of the other stocks also so beta is basically the relationship between the risk and the return how the stock behaves with risks and with the returns now this ex study we study this example this example is self explanatory these evaluations normally these are available in the newspapers also about the stocks which are traded in the stock exchange this is a simple example now you see let's assume this security is i so according to the formula is risk free so this is return on stock i which is equal to risk free rate of return risk free rate of return is normally which is given by treasury bonds bonds issued by the government which are risk free and go forever so there is no risk in buying those so this risk free return is used as a reference here so we have plus beta of i multiplied by risk premium that is the rate of return market offers minus your risk free rate of return so it become 9.5 percent here now we have another example here that is the free cash flow example basically given to you here here we have that also and we now calculate the firm value to calculate the firm value we use the value vac here so 300 million we use the basic formula d1 multiplied by 1 plus g so divided by vac minus g so we get the firm value it is equal to 5200 million we subtract this out of this that that so we have the equity value equals to 200 million so equity value of uh, becomes 2200 million here free cash flow so the per share when we divide this 2200 million by the number of shares we get this per share intrinsic value 200 million basically to get this is the whole thing is to get the intrinsic value of a share so i repeat this again we first take out the value from the formula and growth 5200 million is the value of the firm we have a debt of 3000 so in a way our equity is 2200 millions 5200 minus 3000 that is equal to 22 so when we divide this 2200 million divided by the number of shares that is 200 million we get share value is dollar 11 intrinsic value now let's do another example of free cash flows on equity we have only equity involved here so no debt right now if you study this example we have 1 million outstanding shares projected cash flow in for future is 30 million 
required rate of return or cost of equity is 13%. Perpetual growth rate is expected to be 5.5%. Find the intrinsic value of the company. To find the intrinsic value, we have this 30 million cash flow divided by 13 minus 5.5. Let me get my pointer on. So we have this dollar 30 million divided by this 13 minus 5.5. That is 400 million. Now to get the intrinsic value, we have we divide this 400 million by 1 million because 1 million shares are outstanding. So we get 400 dollar per share value <coughs> here. That is the intrinsic value of the share. Now here is an example of multi-stage free cash flow equity evaluation. Now, we, this product they produce for kids normally, the infants. The company's cash flows from the operations for the most recent financial years is $20 million. The interest expense is $2 million and tax rate is 20%. The company expected growth rate is 15% in the first three years and add the at 5% annual growth rate or thereafter. That means this is the Gordon growth rate coming up later on. First three years abnormal growth rate and now the 5% the normal growth rate or Gordon growth rate. There is a no change in the borrowing during the period. The, so they save you from the trouble. If the company is weighted average, cost of capital is 8%. Prevailing risk-free interest rate is 3%. The market risk premium is 5%. And the company's beta coefficient is 1.5. Work out the company's value using its free cash flow to equity. Now, first of all, we separate the interest area here. So we bring our cash flows to equity cash flows. That means free cash flows from equity model. So let's do it. At the first stage, year zero, FCFE is year zero. We have this cash flow from operations minus the interest multiplied by the tax rate adjustment plus the net borrowings. So here we have the year zero current year, 18.4 million here. Similarly, after that, we had a 15% growth rate. So now we have $21.16 million. Here, we adjust this 15% 1 plus GN, multiply this year zero cash flow, and so on. So we go to next slide now. Now we have these three cash flows from equity now we are calculating with 15% growth rate. We have this year zero was if you remember this 18.4 million and we multiplied with 1.15 and we get it 24.33. For the year three is It is 27.98. Now, with this, we end this our abnormal growth calculations here, and we, then now we calculate the terminal value from the Gordon growth method. Now, the Gordon growth method or the terminal value is calculated here, which comes out to be 554.32. Same formula free cash flow from year 3, and they were multiplied by. 1 plus G C now normal growth rate is G C which is 5% now so so this cost of now the equity is 
here and now in the same formula we get this value as 554.32 right we use the same formula now to calculate this is the valuation formula here together and we are getting this 473.18 present value of the stock so you see this is done in two stages the first stage we have normal growth the second stage is the terminal value with modern growth or normal single step increase with normal growth so this is all together taken in the, as a present value now which comes out to be 473.18 now here we have this working final working of this question now in this you see the free cash flows 18.4 21.16 from equity only remember that this is here the third year was 27.98 Similar terminal value from the Gordon growth value was taken out to be 554.4. So we, it becomes 582.39. Now we calculate this discount factor every year from 10.5% cost of equity. The present value factors come to this. When we multiply this, we find these values here. When we add them together, we get a present value at year 0 of 473.18 so this is your present value of the stock right with this we end our lecture 7 my next tentative lecture FM08 will include valuation of bonds and valuation of stocks. So please continue with this lectures and you will understand about these valuations also. These are strictly necessary for finance purposes and for company management. I end my lecture with this bond voyage. So kindly refer to my channel Find Benders 172 for more knowledge videos and for further any other coming lectures. I, if you like this video, please press the like button. Please refer my channel to all your students and friends, colleagues, so that I can produce more informative material for you. For all your queries, I have this email address and a WhatsApp number of 92336-4313-715. Please do give me comments, but positive comments.